Okay, so I want to establish two things right off the bat for this video. First off, I'm making this video for two primary fan bases, the Montreal Canadiens, because hey, they do have quite a big part in this story, and the Tampa Bay Lightning as well. Because, like it or not, the Tampa Bay Lightning play an even bigger part in this story too. And secondly, I'm making this video not as a Jonathan Drouin hate video. I don't want anybody in the comments to go out there saying, Oh, Lego, you're hating on Drouin. What's wrong with the trade? Drouin is fine. I agree. Let's get that out of the way first. That's another caveat, I guess, to put at the intro. Drouin's a good player. I like Jonathan Drouin for the Montreal Canadiens. Will I say that he's the best version of Druen 100% of the time? No, but I do say that when he is at his best, he is very, very good. It's just the ability to find that consistency is what we want out of Druen. And secondly, you know, if I had to make a one-for-one -one decision right now, who would I rather have on my team, Sergachev or Druen? I would personally go Sergachev, but Druen is not too far behind. So... Today we're talking about how Mikhail Sergachev is, as dubbed by this TVA Sports article that I thought just had a very beautiful headline that I wanted to use in this video. He has not finished hurting Canadians fans. And this is an article going over what Julien Brisebois has spoken about when it comes to the 22-year-old left-handed defenseman who is a recent Stanley Cup champion, mind you. And the article in question doesn't really go over too much with the actual Montreal Canadiens. It just goes over the comments. But, of course, the headline kind of brought me in, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the idea of a Mikhail Sergachev and what he has meant to the Montreal Canadiens in the form of a dream and to the Tampa Bay Lightning as a whole. So if you're unaware, let's talk a little bit about Mikhail Sergachev. Mikhail Sergachev was a former Montreal Canadiens draft pick, drafted ninth overall in the first round of the 2016 NHL entry draft. I remember this pick very fondly, not because I was a Habs fan back then, but because Mikhail Sergachev was one of the top defensemen taken off of the board in this draft. In fact, he was the second one taken after Ole Olevi, who was selected by the Vancouver Canucks. Funny fact, out of the top 17 draft picks in the first round of the 2016 draft, Ole Leo Levy is the only one to have not played a regular season NHL game. It's pretty sad. The Vancouver Canucks, who are my favorite team, I was very heavily following the draft story back then. So when they took Oleo Levy, I was kind of surprised. I was like, okay, the other defensemen, we're going to have to wait and see how they pan out because if the Canucks end up taking the wrong D-man here, it could be very bad for their rebuild. In hindsight, it's okay because now they have PD and Hughes, but there was always an idea in the back of my mind that saw Mikhail Sergachev as somewhat of a rival because he was the second D-man taken and because if he was better than Ole Olevi, the Vancouver Canucks would have made a big mistake. Mikhail Sergachev went ninth overall though, and that was kind of where he was supposed to go according to all the rankings. Because he was a very, very good offensively capable defender in the OHL playing for the Windsor Spitfires, and then he played with the Montreal Canadiens as well. He played four games, didn't get any points, but at the end of the day, Canadians fans are like, hey, we need left-handed defense. Mikhail Sergachev fills in that role. It's just, he got traded for Jonathan Drouin. Everybody kind of knows the story. It was a one-for-one -one trade with a conditional second attached to that, and the Canadians were like, okay, if Jonathan Drouin pans out to the potential that we know he has, this could be a very good move. Because Drouin at the time was in a weird spot with the lightning, consistency issues, point production issues, all that stuff. We didn't really know the direction that he was going to go through because his overall work ethic and his aspirations didn't align with what many people thought was the absolute ceiling. So, Going over to Montreal, Habs fans are like, okay, he's a French-Canadian guy, that's cool, but we're giving up Mikhail Sergachev for him. How is that going to pan out? And immediately after Mikhail Sergachev got 40 points in 70 games played in the NHL, one of the better rookie defensemen in point production that year. And then this most recent season, he was a beast in the playoffs. 10 points, 25 games played for the Lightning, a season where he had 34 points in 70 games in total. Mikhail Sergachev as an RFA recently signed a three-year contract with an average annual value of $4.8 million a season. And as a guy who's already a bona fide top four defenseman who can contribute on the power play and do very good things offensively at 22 years old, 6'3", 216 pounds, he's a big body, this is definitely a steal of a contract. And for good reason too. Take a look at this. These are the guys who are making more money than Mikhail Sergachev. 
you have a whole bunch of good players, some bad players thrown in there. Taking a look at the list, Rasmus Ristolainen, Anton Strahlman, Colton Pareko, Johnny Boychuk, Nate Schmidt, Tyler Myers is up here, which is an absolute disgrace. <laughs> and then you have a few other guys here in the more expensive side, let's just say Brent Seabrook, Mark Edward Vlasic, Jared Spurgeon. Victor Hedman, the teammate, obviously is on here as well, but there are indeed so many defenders that you would rather have Sergachev over instead that are making more money than Sergachev. It's just plain and simple. It's a steal of a contract. Sure, it's a bridge deal. He's going to get better as time goes on, and you're going to have to pay him more money in 2023, but for the time being, for a team like the Lightning who are going to remain competitive, it's a good deal. Here's what Julien Brisebois said about Mikhail Sergachev in his comments that were published on TBA Sports. I was so impressed with his game and his progress. He arrived in the NHL at 19, and he played an important role for our team. He now has three seasons under his belt, which is very impressive, and we value that. He only shows a very small glimpse of the defender he will be when he's mature. I expect his role to be similar to what he was during the playoffs with us. He played more than 20 minutes a game on the power play and the PK, sometimes shorthanded. Sometimes he was on the first wave, other times he ended up on the second. We also used him on the right or the left, but mostly on the left. We have used him in all situations in the home stretch of the season and in the playoffs, and I expect that to continue to be the case for the future. Then they talk about the three years later version of Mikhail Sergachev. We know he is under contract for the next three seasons and that he'll continue to improve. He's so young, especially for a defender, and that's great news for our organization. That's what I think should be remembered. Mikhail will play for us the next three years and probably after as well. This contract is excellent news for us. We also have this article on the TampaBayTimes.com. Actually, it's just TampaBay.com, but Tampa Bay Times is the website where we have some comments from Mikhail Sergachev talking about how he wants to stay with the boys. And some of these comments, ooh, they kind of do sting the Montreal Canadiens fanbase, but at the end of the day, you read these comments and you're like, yeah, I understand why he's saying that. I've had the best memories in my hockey career here in the Tampa Bay Lightning organization. The first goal in the Stanley Cup and many, many more things. I miss the boys on our team and I want to get back to Tampa as soon as possible. And that means a lot to me. I wouldn't want to change the team for money. So I guess anybody out there who is trying to plan some conspiracy theory, oh, Mikhail Sergachev, free agent, get in the sign with our team, come back to Montreal, bud. Yeah, unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen. So, yeah, you know, it does sting for Canadiens fans because taking a look at what he is now, the Canadiens kind of do need depth on left defense in terms of the roster today because I think I'd rather have Sergachev than Joel Edmondson. No disrespect to Edmondson, but like, Sergachev, man, come on. It's just, and I said this at the beginning, whether or not Jonathan Drouin becomes the player we know he can be is going to be what ultimately determines if this trade was balanced out the way that some people thought it was previously. And I don't really know where to go from there. So we'll end this video off here. Talk to me in the comments about Mikhail Sergachev and his new contract, how good it is for the Lightning, and what you feel about him formerly being a Canadian and having Jonathan Druin as the return. I know some people may get a little bit, uh, what's the word, hostile? Yeah, a little bit toxic in the comments, but hey, it kind of comes in the territory when you're talking about Montreal Canadian stuff, where in some cases they lose, quote unquote. In this situation, they've lost the trade, quote unquote. But talk to me in the comments if you think you enjoyed this edition of the Trolls 99. And bye. <laughs>